<laughs> you already know. Let's go. Shout out to Royal Flush. Always. Respect to that man. And uh, the beat miners, of course, did this phenomenal beat. The feeling, man. The soul. One of my favorite beats ever. Anyway, you're talking about Future and Metro. Uh, we don't trust you. Uh, this shit is trash. You already know what it is. It's very obviously trash. Um, what can I say about this? I got some notes here. Um, these surprise albums are always trash. I'm always very skeptical of people who out of nowhere are like, hey, we got some new shit. <laughs> it's like, okay, you just, you got some off, you know, some trash you got to offload. I get it. All right, so let me start off with right away the opening song, which is the title track, We Don't Trust You, okay? Uh, we don't trust you to keep us awake, definitely. Um, so right away, I was listening to it and I was like, okay, this is that cold, attempt at a cold, beautiful Metro vibe, you know, the kind of shit that you would hear on um, Bernia in particular. Like, there was a particular era of Metro, really when he was, like, murdering shit, actually, in the 2016 sort of era, um, 2017-ish a little bit, where it was just sort of this cold, icy, like, ice palace, you know, like, savage mode, like, uh, that ice palace type of vibe and atmosphere, which I loved, actually, I liked it, I thought it was very good, and I'm a Metro fan, I fucks with Metro, so, you know, so that you guys know that, let me put that out there, I do think that Metro has made some of the best trap of the last decade, and he was very Im instrumental in actually making decent trap. You know, it's like, if we're going to listen to Trap, we might as well listen to Metro type of thing. But right away, this is sounding dated. We don't trust you sounding dated and whack. And, um, and, this, and it gives me this vibe like, man, we're in for a slog right now. And it's interesting because I always found Metro, to be honest with you, that Bernier stuff, it was, it did work and it was beautiful. That Ice Palace vibe was cool. But I did feel like it was getting a little old. And I'm so glad that Pierre came along. Because Pierre really kind of like said, nah, nah, let's speed this shit up. Let, let's just get back to a little bit more activity. Okay, like at least on the underground, you know. And I think that Pierre, Playboy Cardi, again, you know, game changers. But they came through with something fresh and gave us a whole new sort of, again, not that Pierre is doing some, some trap you've never heard of necessarily. I mean, he, he is, but he, you know, he's, he's kind of continuing in the tradition. But my point is that he came through and really did change um, how we listen to trap and made people, I would say, make stuff that was a little bit bouncier again, which is great, honestly. Um, but anyways, I just think this beat was a slog. And, um, you know, right away I was like, oh, I'm in for it. This is your opening track. I'm in for some really boring shit. And uh, Future is done out here, man. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't even believe that we thought this shit was hot. I mean, I never really was like a Future guy myself. I always thought he was kind of trash. Outside of a couple records, you know, like Serve the Bass, which still goes. But um, he's just boring as fuck, man. Like, <laughs> so anyway. And it just, like, when I listen to this song and I listen to Future, I'm like, oh my god. This takes me back to, like, sleepy, you know, that era where we, people thought the shit was hot. But it's clearly not hot and it's not going to sustain. Anyway, so moving on, Young Metro, this is meandering, but none memorable, like pretty much almost all, if not everything on this entire album. Uh, Ice Attack, man, I almost fell asleep on this, so I skipped this shit. Uh, type Shit, um, I skipped Travis, I, I always skip Travis, um, and then I went straight to Playboy, he's sounding like a horse future, which sucks, um. The fall, the fall off of Playboy Cardi is another whole thing entirely. But um, as you know, I've been one of the earliest sort of Playboy Cardi supporters. I didn't really like the stuff on Awful Records. I think that um, Playboy Cardi came into his own on Self-Titled. The Self-Titled, the, the Awful stuff was, I mean, obviously it was like some talent there. But um, I really do think that Self-Titled was, was, was a complete shift uh, for Playboy Cardi for the better. And then after that, he just shifted. And, you know, Dial It was, of course, you know. Still cool. There was definitely some some good stuff there, but it, it, the fall off was 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 there, you know. Unfortunately, um, now claustrophobic. <laughs> uh, this starts off with an intro from Prodigy. You already know how I feel about Prodigy and Mob Deep. Was a long time listener, um, quoting the infamous uh, whack rappers. It's it's funny, man. Like 
great rappers. <laughs> I miss you, P. You know what I'm saying? We all miss you, man. We all miss Mob Deep. You know, that that togetherness, you know, in a sense. And the, the stuff they did was timeless. You know, a great rapper like Prodigy can just talk and it becomes like, it's almost like he's rapping to you as he's just having a conversation with you. That's talent, okay? And he's saying memorable shit. I mean, I, this is not scripted. He's just literally saying, to me, I don't even listen to these niggas. <laughs> it's a quotable. Like, he's giving you quotables like off the top of his head, right? That's a person I'm gonna listen to. I'm not gonna listen to like some random nigga that can't spit, you know what I'm saying? So obviously, um, you know, I was, I, I like that. I like hearing Prodigy. Uh, but I also thought to myself, I was like, I thought you Atlanta niggas don't listen to Wu-Tang and Mob Deep. That's what I hear in the forums. <laughs> oh, you know, back in the South, we don't really bump that shit. Yeah, okay, whatever, nigga. Like, you know, 90s niggas still run you niggas. New York niggas still run you. They invented the shit. Stop it, okay? Like, if you like this genre, there's no way you can't like 90s rap from the top level to the underground, right? Unless you're just being a fraud, which a lot of people are frauds anyway. But that's beside the point. Um, this song sucks. So moving on, like that. Um, I recognize the thirty. You know, there's a kind of a three six mafia vibe or sample to that, but really it's a sample from Rodney O and uh, Joe Cooley, Everlasting Bass. So anyway, the song is meant, but this is maybe one of the better songs so far. Um, like when I'm listening to it, it still sucks. Then Kendrick comes in with this, like, geek delivery. Hey, hey, let's get it, bro. And it's, I, I can't listen to this shit. <laughs> you know, like, I literally burst out laughing when Kendrick was spitting at certain parts of this. Like, and not in a good way. This is <laughs> not a fan. I, I can't with this dude. Absolute trash. Um, and, uh, you know, oh, the big three. You know, like, Ken <laughs> Kendrick's not saying nothing here, okay? Like, he's literally just recycling far home talk. Like, and it's most basic. And he still, he sneaked this and the sneak this. <laughs> it's so weak, nigga. Like, just go, like, you know, you've been sneak dissing for 10 plus years. And even now, you're still sneak this and that. Sneak this. Like, come on. Jesus, man. This era. Anyway. Slimed in. This beat started off sounding like something like um, I was, you saw at Scarface, like when Elvira was coming down the elevator. So I was kind of like, ooh, um, you know, but then it's worse, honestly. So skip that shit. And then Magic, Don Juan. Um, this was trash. How the fuck do you have Boy Wonder, Honorable C Note, and the beat is still trash? I don't understand the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it really is phenomenal how, like... <sighs> Like, how do five producers get together to make one trash beat? Like, please explain that to me, new generation. Like, what's up with y'all on that? <laughs> um, and of course, when the beat switches and, and Future continues, I'm like, again, Future is so trash. You'll notice in this review, I'm really just talking about Metro because I, it's already established that Future's like placeholder nonsense. Like, I wasn't listening to anything he was saying. I just heard drugs and lean. And, you know, it's the same old nonsense. So, like, he's, be he's beyond garbage. So this is really a Metro showcase to me that, that I, you know, prefer to talk about. Um, Cinderella, this was Lush and Sleepy. Of course, as soon as Travis started skipping, or sorry, <laughs> as soon as he started rapping, I started skipping. <laughs> um, running out of time, running out of patience, skip. Uh, fried, yeah, I'm fried, yeah, I'm fried, yeah, I'm fried, yeah, I'm fried. Fuck out of here, skip. Atlanta is fried for real. I've been to Atlanta. This vibe is garbage. When you go to them clubs in Atlanta and they're playing this shit, you're going to be bored out of your fucking mind. Trust me on that. Um, ain't no love. Garbage. Everyday hustle. Yawn. GTA. Nah, we're not going back to 2016, homie. This is garbage. Um, I've seen it all. Done it all. Mop deep again. Again, 90s niggas, Queens niggas, run you niggas, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this was always funny to me. People shit on the 90s, but they can't stop referencing the 90s because, again, the right, the 90s was the apex of this entertainment shit. From rap to the film business, let's be honest here, you already know. Um, what the fuck, yeah, man, I don't know. That was trash. Uh, and then where my twin at, that was also garbage. 
So look, my conclusion here is very simple. I mean, this slow shit that Metro is trying to bring back or putting on this album, it's done, okay? Future is done and definitely this vibe is done. All these beats sound like terrible attempts at making this instrumental burn yet again. And I love this instrumental. I think this instrumental is fantastic. It's great to listen to. It's a good nudie song, but we're, we're off that now, okay? And the truth of the matter is that if you can't make it as good as this, Again, like, don't even bother, you know? Um, you know, you gotta make something with a little bit more energy. This is why, in my honest opinion, if I was going to say, like, Metro wanted to, like, you know, lean back in his old vibe, I'd say, go to Jumpman. I played the Jumpman instrumental because at the end of the day, that's more active. This is actually, in my opinion, top, I mean, this is like top, top three metro beat ever you know um i'm pretty sure i don't know if i ranked it number one uh when i was talking about metro beats it, check my channel but this is what i mean like if you're gonna go you know what i mean like let's 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 get people moving again you know what i'm saying instead of like this faded like you know i'm on perky oh, that shit's garbage um again we've moved past that i mean you have someone like gunna for example who's like out here this is the new metro Turbo and these guys, Wheezy, they're, they're kind of doing where Metro like left off, but again, making something a little bit more active, right? Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. By the way, <laughs> why did y'all tell me that the snitch had bangers? Like, I'm just discovering this shit. <laughs> I've been playing, I uh, thought I was playing like heavy because that, um, and shout out to uh, the commenter, the poster put me on to that um, because I've been playing the shit out of that. And then I was like checking out some gunner shit um, when he was performing. And then I heard this and I was like, what the fuck? Like, listen to this. This live performance. And I was like, wait a second. This shit kind of dope. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. You gotta have energy in this rap shit, man. I'm sorry. Like, it, you know, hip hop is is energetic at its core. So the point is, I can understand why you know people were forgiving of Scuff Gunner coming back, you know, as a snitch. Um, <laughs> because at the end of the day, like right before he got arrested, he just dropped some hard shit. And the music always speaks. That that's just the point, man. It, it it's all about music at the end of the day, you know. And when he came back with "Fuck You Mean," which, you know, not a great song, nothing that, but it's not trash. And it was one of the standout songs of that year, I guess. Um, so he's he's back. I mean, that's just how these things go. You make hard shit, it, you know, you're gonna have some longevity, and people are gonna respect where the fuck you're coming from. So you know, people are usually one project behind. So by the time people realized that uh, Gunna was, you know, or they knew that Gunna was being released, they probably were just getting put on to thought I was playing. And they were like, yo, this shit go. What the fuck? you like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to support the snitch. <laughs> so, on that note, y'all, let's go. Peace.